until I know the scope of what's going on, the details, and until I just hear back from my attorney with everything that I, with, with all of my questions answered the way that I'd like them to be answered, I'm going to change a little bit of the way that I do the videos. So do forgive me if you find the format to be not as appealing as the old ones. So let's see if we can tell what's going on with this MacBook Air board over here. Remember, no spill. No spill. Never a spill. Okay, we have this crap over here. Uh, uh, oh. No spill, right? <laughs> All right, we have that. And then, oh, God. And we have this. And that's on a TPS 51916. Okay, so the first thing that I would want to do here is I would want to open the schematic. And in the schematic, I'd like to see how that works. So let's just open up a schematic over here so I can show you what's going on. Okay, so it seems like that chip is U7400. It's 1.2 volts for the RAM, and it's important, and I don't like water, said frowny face. What, what, well, what do you guys want from me? I can't, I, I'm, not, I'm not a visual artist. I can't draw. This is, the, this, the, this is what you're going to have to put up with until I'm fully uh, informed and up-to-date on what, on, on what uh, the lovely people at Kilpatrick and Townsend have in store for me. Now, anyway, so let's, uh, let's continue over here. <laughs> oh, man. I tried, man. I tried. I tried. What? You, you, want, you want me to just give up? No. Anyway, so I tried. So what I would do here... So what, one thing you may notice is that the chip says TI on it, which indicates that it's probably made by Texas Instruments. And then it says 51916. Now, with this indicate, now most of the Texas Instruments chip sets that you're going to find, they start with TPS. So what I would do here is I would Google TPS 51916 and see what I find. And hopefully I find a schematic that's better than the last one. Because that schematic was sad. 925, 51925, no, it was a different number, 51916, data sheet, and we're going to just, I, I want to get an idea of how this is put together, so let's see, here we go, so this is what I'm interested in, all right, so this looks like a buck regulator with an LDO, so the whole idea here is a buck regulator is something that's going to take a higher power, and to a higher voltage and turn it into a lower voltage, and an LDO is something that's going to take a a low voltage and turn it into a slightly lower voltage. So for example, like you want to turn, if you want to turn 12 volts in a one, buck converter. If you want to turn like three volts in a one and a half, LDO, if that makes any sense. Um, I've, I've really oversimplified something that deserves much more explanation, but just to get to the point there. So let's go back to our screen over here. Now the main thing that I'm interested in when it comes to this type of circuit is the input, output, what I'm expecting. So it says over here, V in, V in on pin 12, which is going to be 5 volts, so 5 V in. Let me just zoom in in case you can't really see that too well. 5 volts in on pin 12. And I should get, well, according to the schematic over here, the schematic says that it's 1.2 V volts for RAM, so I'm expecting 1.2 volts on output. So on pin 12, I should see input, and on pin 2, I should see output. And I get, see, because this is output, and it's going back to pin 2 and so that it can see what it's making or whatever. So let's just go back over here and, t and take a look at this area. So I'm gonna, so since we have a dot over here, I can jump to the assumption that this is over here is going to be pin 2, which is where uh, the output should be. And then over here, somewhere up here, uh, should be pin 12, which is where input would be. The problem is that it looks so bad I can't even really see anything. And if it looks that bad, it probably shouldn't be on the board itself. So I'm just going to take all that crap off. All right, kicking on the air filter. Uh, find me a donor. Here we go, donor board. No, not the same. Grab me
Yeah, I mean, there are some things that I genuinely want to share, but I just don't want to say anything until I know where I stand. But I know that I'm getting trolled. There are just certain things that you just don't expect to hear from certain people. And I know that in some way, shape, or form that I am being trolled and that it's going to come back to bite me in the ass in some way that I don't expect. I'm really excited for the day where I can freely speak about all of this as if it was past tense. gross all right so we're going to clean this area a little bit so it's fit for for rework there was a hair in there Okay, scratch away at this. Scratch. The thing, the one thing that kind of gets me about all of this when I read particular posts from uh, people who are really a fan of Apple. One thing I don't think people understand, at the end of the day, for all the things I may say about Apple support, Apple out of warranty service, how Apple treats independent repair centers, what I do is keep stuff working for people that use and love Apple products. Like really, I mean, for all the stuff that I say, my job is pretty much to keep things working for, other, for people who like Apple products. So, I mean, even if you don't like, let's say, you know, I say something about the iPhone or the MacBook that you may not like, because that, that's one of the things that I talk about, as I say, um, you know, there are certain things that are subjective. For example, like operating system usage or features, but then there are things that are objective, such as, you know, what I deal with when I uh, work on the product or objective matters like spill resistance, uh, touch IC issues, on the iPhone 6, so, you know, when you deal, that's a great one. I mean, when you walk into the store, the employee is literally, he, he takes your phone from you when you have a touch IC issue on an iPhone 6, he tells you, we do not acknowledge the problem. And while he's saying we don't acknowledge the problem, he's saying that out loud to you while he's bending your phone to try to get the touch IC uh, back working. You know, that kind of stuff is uh, objective. So you may think, Lois, you're crapping up, but, but I want you to think about this because a lot of people say that it's a jump to the negative. It's, they say, you know, you're too negative. Well, but when I'm being negative towards a negative situation, that, that actually is a positive. So if the company that you love is making a product that in some way, uh, you know, is designed in a manner in which it, it lasts 12 months and then a lot of them die, and I say, hey, that probably shouldn't happen, and if it does happen, there should be support available for it. I don't think that's a negative thing. I'm saying a negative thing about something that just so happens to be negative. In the hopes that it will be remedied and become positive. And a lot of, that's the thing, I don't use these products, but if I were to, if, like, I have always said, if David Bowie were coming back to life for 40 minutes only, and I got to record him doing You've Been Around live before he goes back into his grave, I would not do that on my, the machine that I use here. I get a Mac for it. You know, there are uses for everything. And a lot of the people who use these mission critical products, one of the things that would be a good selling point to the individuals that use these mission critical products is support. Not just first party support, but third party as well. Knowing that when you're out of warranty or when you're away from an Apple store that you can go someplace and they will make it work again. 
that's valuable to the professional community. And it's something that we would offer. Yeah, it was just one of those things where it's like, I get done with a really long, drawn-out legal battle of crap, and I win, and I'm good. I even made time. I cleaned up my whole apartment. I got wire ties for all the shit behind my TV and my stereo. It's like, I got free time, man. Great. And yet I get a call from a friggin' billion-dollar law firm. Will it ever end? Okay. I wonder how many people are going to unsubscribe when they see the schematic that I made. If you want to call that a fucking schematic. A schematic. I'm going to turn that vent around so it's not pointing at you anymore when I'm done. Because I'm sure that that's freezing. Yeah, it's, it's, it's literally blowing directly on you. Because I love cold. Now we go over to this area. So what is that resistor for? The one that looks really nasty. The one right... You see what I'm talking about when I say the one that looks really nasty? I should have said this before. I put flux on it. But I showed you before. Was that one? See that with the nasty stuff? Let's see what that was. All right, so it looks like that is a resistor. So it's a 35.7 kilo ohm resistor uh, between PP1V05SO VREF and PP1V05SO FB. So let's see, do we have 35 kilo ohms there? Let's check on the multimeter. Surprisingly, we do, but I still don't trust it. I just have a feeling that that's going to break later on. So I'm still going to replace it. If it looks like that, my trust is low. Okay, we take this off. Bam. And oh, the iron was sleeping there for a second. All right, you get whoops, you get this going. Man. Focus, motherfucker. There we go. Bumping into this microscope camera more and more often lately. Flow in a place. Good little resistor. Good boy. Good resistor. All right. Now, time to see if we have magic. Bam, baby. Ha ha. 
That's, and this is one of the boards that turns on, off, on, off, on, off, then finally on. But as you can see, it works. Yay. Beautiful. And that's how we fix boards in the new system. Until I hear back from my attorney. These are the schematics that you guys will be dealing with. Because I can't fucking draw. And that's it for today.